Well, one thing that's been very striking to me as, as an outsider watching some of these discussions in theoretical physics is that the multiverse is very popular these days. I mean, I, my sense is that, uh, I, I don't know what the percentages would be, but a fairly high percentage of theoretical physicists would, would say, yes, there is a multiverse here, whereas my sense <laughs> is that 10 or 20 years ago, that was largely a fringe idea. Well, as I say, I draw great optimism from that fact. I think people, the majority of the physics, theoretical physics community, are very confused. Um, as they were at the end of the 19th century, people thought it was all resolved. You know, there, were, there was classical mechanics and the theory of heat. There was Maxwell's theory and everything looked brilliant. There were a few tiny little problems waiting to be resolved. And most physicists think that way. But what, why would most physicists buy into the multiverse model? I mean, model? May, maybe it's worth saying, first of all... Because you can publish your papers. <laughs> multiverse, ideas about multiverses fall into two very distinct categories. There's one um, that has to do with solving a foundational problem in quantum mechanics. Um, um, the so-called measurement problem in quantum mechanics. Um, and this is the, this is the Everettian um, so-called many worlds theory, now referred to as a, as a multiverse theory. I think there's a pretty straightforward explanation of why lots of theoretical physicists got interested in that. Th this is the idea that every time we're confronted with a choice, right. you know, we, it's sort of the universe splits off That's into correct. two ways, and so That's there are correct. these infinite numbers of parallel universes. That's correct. And it, is, it, <clears throat> is, it wasn't until recently that, um, that you know, we had any kind of data which made it responsible even to begin to speculate about sufficiently early eras of cosmic evolution that quantum mechanics was going to get seriously involved. Mm -hmm. When we came to that, if you go to the quantum mechanics textbooks, you find, well, quantum mechanics is something only well defined if there's an observer outside the system who's doing the measurement, blah, blah. You're talking about the early universe. What the hell are you supposed to be talking about? With an obs there's no observers. <laughs> We'd better find a way of talking about quantum mechanics. Lots of people thought that doesn't, that doesn't involve in some crucial way a cut between the observer and what's observed. And this is the way standard presentations of, of quantum mechanics had looked. So there was, for the first time, serious interest in coming to grips with some idea of what's now called quantum mechanics without an observer, or some serious solution to the measurement problem. It was also true that this Everettian picture seemed to lots of physicists to do the least violence to the existing mathematical structure of quantum mechanics among all the proposals for solving the measurement problem. Um, I, think, I think in the end of the day, it doesn't, I mean, I think it doesn't solve the measurement problem, and, and, and the thought that it does is based on a really interesting and really subtle, but nonetheless, at the end of the day, uh, a misunderstanding. But it's not mysterious that, that people got interested in that sort of multiverse. Then there's a quite different mm -hmm. idea of a multiverse, which is also quantum mechanical in origin, but which is specifically tied to inflationary um, cosmological models. And it just, you know, it, it, the arguments were presented that if you follow the logic of these inflationary models, they're going to be boiling off um, billions and billions of these universes rather than just one. Once again, this has to do with quantum mechanical sorts of tunneling phenomena because you can't, you know, th th there's this hill that universes roll, this potential hill that they roll down in order to get born, and quantum mechanical wave functions are necessarily going to spread out, and so that being born is going to occur at lots of different times, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, these are then recently there is, there's an appearance of lots of papers um, um, with the theme that these two different kinds of multiverse pictures are actually closely connected with one another. In my view, this is piling more misunderstandings on top of more misunderstandings. <laughs> but um, 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 but it's, not, it's not, I don't think it's difficult to give a sort of compelling account of why these views became of interest to physicists. This is, a, I, I, um on the idea of wh whether the quantum multiverse is the same as the inflationary multiverse. Uh, I heard this idea from Leonard Susskind, uh, one of the inventors of string theory at Stanford. 
I was talking to Steven Weinberg, who is uh, the father of the standard mo model of particle physics, uh, with probably one of the, the, perhaps the greatest physicist living. He said, this idea seems crazy to me that he could identify the quantum multiverse with the inflationary multiverse. Mm. They have nothing, they're at right angles to each other. <laughs> and I was talking to uh, our friend Sean Carroll, uh, a very brilliant young uh, theoretical physicist at, um, at uh, Caltech. And he said, well, yeah, I thought it was crazy to identify the two, but now I'm coming around. I found arguments that they are the same. And so this should give you some idea of how, even though, as Neil points out, cosmology is very much uh, sensitive to empirical observations, which are, you know, the richness of the data now is, is almost overwhelming. It's, it has this sort of crazy speculative side. Mm. Um, well, and, I mean, it, it raises the question of whether... Where I no mean, one agrees. And well, people can call the, each other crazy. Can, uh. can the multiverse <laughs> even be tested scientifically? Or is this essentially a, a metaphysical proposition? No, I think it's worse than that. Um. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Neil, by the way, is called a proponent of the multiverse. Brian Green, yeah. in his book on multiverses, has an entire chapter describing the model that you... Uh, and Paul Steinhardt, and Paul yes. Steinhardt as, as, a, as a multiverse model. Yeah, and I, he, asked, I asked Neil beforehand, yeah. does he take umbrage at that? And he said, indeed I do. Yeah, um. no, it's not a multiverse model. Um, no, the multiverse is just an example of a bad theory. Um, the multiverse, you know, if you ask, can you predict anything? The answer is no. There's nothing they can predict. Can you accommodate anything? Oh, yes, they can accommodate everything. Because they have this multiverse, and you just find the right place in the multiverse, it'll look like our universe. So it's a remarkably unprecise theory. Um, the amazing thing is that you know, people have welcomed it. I mean, they should have flung their hands up. And, and it wasn't just inflation, by the way. It was string theory. So string theory was initially hoped to be a theory of everything. You know, this would be the ultimate unified theory. And then it was discovered that string theory had these uh, seven extra dimensions of space, and they could be twisted up in a myriad possible ways. And unfortunately, the ways in that which they are twisted up are really, really important. And they determine the properties of the physical world that we would see. So because you can twist them up in an infinite number of ways, uh, you can get an infinite number of different kinds of worlds. So string theory was coming to this picture of a multiverse for sort of totally different reasons to inflation coming to reason for a multiverse. But in both cases, it was because they are bad theories. They are not predictive theories. But there's, maybe there's a point that's <laughs> worth making here. Um, um, there, sometimes it's, it's said that theories of parallel universes are, are bad, bad examples of empirical scientific theories just because you couldn't observe the other universe. This is quite independent mm. of the worries that Neil was talking about. Um, um, but I'm not sure I see what the argument is there. That is, it could perfectly well be the case, it, doesn't, it isn't the case of the theories that Neil is talking about, but it perfectly well imaginably be the case that we can see phenomena here, okay, that have the feature that, that by far the best and simplest explanation we're able to produce of them entails the existence of other universes. So if, if, and, if, and if, 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 if 95% of the theory right. works, then yeah. the, That's the right. other 5% That's right. and, that, and, that, and in that, that sense, yeah. one can perfectly well imagine being in, being in a position where one can say, we have good empirical reasons for believing in the existence of other parallel universes. It doesn't have to do with directly observing those universes, yeah. but it might have to do with observing features of our universe, which can only be successfully accounted for by yeah. theories which, which entail the existence of these other So, yeah, I, th I think quantum mechanics has that character, that mm -hmm. it seems to talk about this uh, infinite number of universes, but we know how to handle it mathematically, in some situations anyway, not, not yet for cosmology. But in some situations, we know how to handle it. We know how to get precise predictions, and they make perfect sense, even though we didn't observe most of the possible universes. 